Hey guys, if you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe and ring the bell icon down below. High above the deserts and oil fields, Royal Daimar Air Force pilots keep a watchful eye on the border for any intruders, as they've done for decades since the end of the Second World War. But today, our flyboys have an ace up their sleeve. The latest acquisition by the Shah for the RDAF from Dassault Aviation, the Mirage F-1EE, a substantial upgrade over the legacy F-1CE previously flown by the Royal Daimar Air Force. A true multi-role aircraft, it doesn't matter whether the enemy has crossed our borders in the air or on the ground. Our boys can hit them in any weather, day or night with the new F-1EE. So go get them, boys! In your Mirage F-1CE to F-1EE conversion course, you can expect to be introduced to the new cockpit layout, inertial navigation system or INS basics, air-to-air -air refueling from the newly acquired Boeing KC-707 tankers, and the new ANALR-300 radar warning receiver system. On your first day of training, when you first strap into the ejection seat of the new Mirage F-1EE, you'll notice some substantial changes. The RWR system has been moved to the top left of the instrument panel for ease of viewing in combat. The navigation indicator has been updated to a new model, but retains its original position underneath the scope for the new Cyrano 4M radar. The addition of the box for the INS or inertial navigation system. The main fuel cock retains its original position, but the two radios are now at the forward portion of the left console. The engine start button, as well as the switches for the main fuel pumps, now reside by your left hip. The armament panel, as well as the sight mode selector switch, now resides in the middle portion of the right console. The ECS system is now at the very back of that right hand console. And you want to make sure that the throttle is firmly in the cut position before engine start. Having it out of the cut position could result in a hot start and engine fire occurring. First thing to do is plan out your flight for that day. Remember that good planning makes you safer as well as more effective over the battlefield. We can also, in the additional properties tab, set the coordinates for waypoint 1 as being correct or incorrect for a stored heading alignment in our INS system. I imagine most folks will want to have this setting set to yes. The first thing to do is start up your Mirage F1EE as normal. And there she goes. Once normal startup is achieved, we can turn on our INS system. Simply take the mode select knob and bring it to the ALCM position for stored heading alignment. Now let the box initialize for a little bit before you start messing with it. For the stored heading alignment, we want to make sure that we have waypoint 1, our current aircraft position selected, and we can start the alignment by pressing the asterisk key. We can see the yellow align light is now flashing, letting us know that the INS is aligning. Moving the second knob to the STS position allows us to see the quality of that alignment. You can now proceed with the rest of the startup procedure of your Mirage F1EE.
when the alignment reaches 85%, the alignment is complete for a course alignment and you can move the mode select knob to the nav position and navigate around the sky. We can see that PRET is now illuminated, letting you know that the INS is aligned. However, we're going to allow the INS to go through its fine alignment stage, so that way we can navigate as precisely as possible around the airspace. We still have some administrative tasks to do, such as contacting ground for our taxi clearance, the new Mirage F1EE sure is a massive leap over the old F5E Tiger II. We now have all nines and the INS is fully aligned in the fine alignment and we are now ready to taxi. Bring the mode select knob to the nav position. Moving the second knob to the PP position for your aircraft's current position. The POS is the position of your currently selected waypoint. We'll move the navigation indicator to the nav N for navigating via our INS system. Keep in mind that Waypoint 1 is your current aircraft position, and Waypoint 2 is where your flight plan starts. To set the navigation of your aircraft to the currently selected waypoint, press the star key on the keypad. Now let's scroll through our various waypoints of our flight plan to ensure they're in the places that we set them in the mission editor. Waypoint 6 is going to be our landing point, and Waypoint 7 we can see is not yet placed. By moving the knob to the POS position, we can see all zeros, letting us know that waypoint 7 is invalid and there is no data. Let's reset waypoint 2 and we're now ready to take off and follow our flight plan that we set in the mission editor. In order to navigate via TACAN, set the navigation indicator to the RNAV end position. Keep in mind that this is not like modern jets. RNAV stands for Radio Navigation. The new multi-role Mirage F1EE comes with an air-to-air -air refueling probe on the nose as standard equipment. However, this comes at the cost of roughly 300 pounds of internal fuel capacity. Set your TACAN to the proper channel of the tanker aircraft. Set your navigation indicator to RNAV-N for radio navigation to the TACAN station of the tanker aircraft. Tune your TRAP 136 radio to the proper frequency to contact the tanker. Ensure the TRAP 136 radio is selected and contact the tanker. We can now see the tanker on our Sirena 4M radar. We're now going to turn the radar off so that we don't irradiate the tanker crew. We're going to disconnect the autopilot and fly an intercept vector on the KC-707 tanker. We're going to turn on the fuel transfer pumps for our air-to-air -air refueling probe. We want to make sure that we slowly approach the tanker from the port side just underneath it. We want to take care to avoid the large wingtip vortices created by the heavy KC-707 tanker. We want to fly formation with the tanker just off the left-hand wing to get used to the bank angle and speed of the tanker. Fly in formation and get yourself nice and comfortable. There's no rush here. When you're ready, slowly slide to the right, right behind the left-hand drogue if you're the first person to the tanker or you're the low-state fuel aircraft. When in position, contact the tanker and let them know you're ready pre-contact. Pre 
slowly and gently ease your way up to the drogue. Do not look at the drogue. Look at the wing of the tanker and only keep track of where the drogue is with your peripheral vision. Staring directly at the drogue will lead to a pilot-induced oscillation every single time. And if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The internal fuel capacity of the Mirage F1EE is pretty small, so your trip behind the tanker should be pretty darn short. When the transfer is complete, slowly slide to the starboard wing of the tanker. Take care to ensure that you do not collide with any other aircraft that are using the tanker's MPRS drogues. Slide underneath any aircraft that are using the right-hand drogue and take up an observation position on the right-hand wing of the tanker aircraft. This can be one of the most fun parts of air-to-air -air refueling for Royal Daimar Air Force pilots, watching the other pilots take on fuel themselves and giving encouragement. The new KC-707 tankers is a massive force multiplier for the Royal Daimar Air Force and will help to ensure that aircraft stay on station for longer to defend the territory of the Kingdom of Daimar. New ANALR 300 radar warning receiver system allows the Mirage F1EE pilot unparalleled situational awareness over the modern electronic battlefield. In our example, our F1 pilot can see a flight of MiG-23 floggers, a SA-6 search and track radar, a PR-19 search radar and an SA-2 site, a strike flight of F4 Phantoms egressing from the target area, a combat air patrol flight of F-16A Fighting Falcons, and a controlling E-2 Hawkeye in the airspace around him. The closer a threat is to the outer portion of the scope, the higher priority that threat is. We can see our brave F-1 pilot has been fired upon by an SA-6. He disconnects the autopilot and uses the Thompson ANALR 300 to get his eyes rapidly on the launch site of the SA-6. He can then perform the appropriate evasive maneuver now that he has eyes on the SA-6 launch site. He looks over his shoulder to maintain visual contact with the SAM that's fired upon him, and he makes a determination that his evasive maneuver has succeeded in trashing the SA-6 gainfall launched upon him. He then uses his ALR-300 to rapidly regain situational awareness around him, and elects to jettison his bombs and external tank as the MiG-23 flogger flight continues to close with his aircraft and the combat air patrol flight of F-16A Fighting Falcons. He elects to commit on the MiG-23 flight and starts to use his Cyrano 4M radar to achieve a radar lock to slave his new Magic 2 air-to-air -air missiles onto the MiG-23s rapidly closing on his position. Due to the dangerous situation, our pilot elects to use the lock-on after launch capability of the Matra Magic 2 missile to fire in the blind at the first MiG-23 flogger. The missile locks on to the flogger. And splash one flogger. Keeping his eye on the lead of the flogger formation, our F-1 pilot turns hard to the left as he sees the lead MiG-23 flying fast to intercept the egressing flight of F-4 Phantoms. He can keep this high level of situational awareness thanks to the new ANALR 300 radar warning receiver system in the Mirage F1EE. 
he holds his fire in an attempt not to accidentally shoot down the F-4s that are off his nose engaging the MiG-23. Using the Cyrano 4M radar, he achieves a radar lock on the MiG-23, slaving the Magic 2 directly onto the flogger. The Magic 2's fantastic flare rejection capabilities allow it to keep track of the MiG even though he is rapidly dropping flares. And that Splash 2, a second MiG-23 flogger falls in flames to the desert floor, all thanks to the enhanced situational awareness provided to our F-1 pilot by the AN-ALR-300 radar warning system. Our pilot reassesses the situation and sees that a new flight of MiG-21 fish beds has popped up on the ALR-300 scope. Electing to retire for the day, our pilot successfully brings his Mirage F-1EE home to fight another day. Well, there you have it, Airman. An introduction to the syllabus of your Mirage F-1CE to F-1EE conversion course. The Shaw and Dassault Aviation believe that the Mirage F-1 family of light, now multi-role fighter aircraft, will remain a mainstay of the Royal Daimar Air Force for many decades to come and serve as an alternative and complement to the large, complex American aircraft like the Grumman F-14A Tomcat and McDonnell Douglas F-4E Phantom II now in service with the RDAF. Treat the Mirage F-1EE well, and she will bring you home safely every time, whether striking targets on land, at sea, or in the air. Study hard, and we'll see you in part two of this course.